Fixing weaknesses in any of the compound lifts is as easy as just doing more volume. Let me explain. So as long as you have good form, and that's a very, very strong prerequisite, you have to have the best form for yourself. Of course, not everyone can have perfect, perfect form exactly how you want to do it, you know, depending on your bone structure, your bone size, how your muscles work, whatever. But as long as your form is okay and good enough, there is no reason that you can't just do a ton of more volume for a specific compound exercise, deadlift, squat, bench, even some other stuff like overhead press pull-ups. Not just do more volume and get better at it. Now, at a very, at the beginner area, that's an obvious answer. But when you get to an intermediate and advanced area, a lot of people tend to deviate and do specialize. So for example, I'll give you for myself, you'll be able to see in these videos here that my deadlift is fairly good off the ground, but I have trouble locking out. So a lot of people would see that and would say, I could work on locking out by doing lower back work, by doing glute work, right? Uh, and, and that is very true, right? Don't get me wrong at all. It is very true. But if you don't want to go crazy about what's hitting what and what has carryover and everything, the simplest way to do it is to just do more volume. Now, why? Well, if you have a sticking point or if you have an issue in any exercise and that kind of looks like you're being held back by, that means that that's the muscle group that is lagging behind in that exercise. Therefore, it is the one reaching failure first, right? So let me give you an example. If an exercise is an RP8, it's an RP8 to that body part. But to other ones, maybe it's an RP6. Maybe you could have gone a lot more just off the ground to the legs, right? And of course, that's not how we measure deadlifts, but in terms of body parts, it's a different story course we never really want to look at it in that case but it's just helpful example to show that it really is mostly hitting that body part to failure now of course it is generally good to include all the muscle groups in your training but to really keep it simple all you have to do is just more volume and any sticking points you have any issues with your deadlift squat or bench will not magically go away but be overcome simply because you're putting more volume into that exercise. Now, with this technique though, I do have to say, you have to rest properly. The biggest problem with this technique is that specializing in other things takes away usually uh, some of the extra stress. So let me just give an example. If you have a problem in the deadlift, like I said I did with the lower back and your glutes, and you decided instead of doing more deadlifts, what I'm gonna do is hip thrusts or rack pulls, and let's just say it's that, right? That is great because it's gonna take away a little bit of the extra fatigue between, the, like the difference between a deadlift and that rack pull and the hip thrusts, right? Uh, that, that's the difficulty, right? If you're only doing deadlifts, then you have more fatigue overall. So you have to manage recovery properly. Now, do I think it's impossible to do that? No, I think by far from most majority of people, it's very reasonable to do that. Unless you're working out six days a week, even on the heavier side of five days a week with more compound lifts per exercise. I, I, that's maybe the area where you'd lean away from that and you'd more specialize. But for most people that I know who work out three to four days a week, usually in that four to five day group, right? Depends on how many compound movements you do every workout, of course. But you could really say, ignore everything else. Just do the compounds for more and it will fix your compounds, make them all stronger and overcome any weaknesses you have within them. It's a great way to do it. Now, it is very much a, something I'd recommend for four days a week, even five days a week. Six days a week to seven is a different story or even four to five days a week if this is a secondary sport for you because the fatigue is very high. If you're doing it as a secondary sport, that's when I would do other types of movements, something that is less fatiguing, something that is stimulating that muscle group uh, that is limiting, but not raising overall fatigue as much as the compound exercise does, right? 
that is the general idea. I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, yeah, implement this in your training. This is how I'm building my new program, 532. It's going to be available probably within the month. See you guys in the next one. Peace.